In this special feature on food frauds and food recalls, let's begin with the most talked about melamine case from China. In 2008, dairy products particularly infant formula were found adulterated with melamine, a chemical added to artificially boost protein readings. Over 300,000 people were affected with 54,000 infants hospitalized and several fatalities. This incident led to a massive crackdown on dairy safety practice in China. Let's watch it here. 54,000 infants across China have developed kidney stones after drinking poisoned milk powder, and now parents around the world are on high alert their children could be next. I'm so afraid, says this mother from Taiwan. I don't know if the milk I bought was from China or not. Chinese milk products have been yanked from the shelves of 12 countries, from Colombia to Bangladesh. Other countries that haven't banned Chinese dairy products, like Canada and Australia, are also testing items for potentially harmful amounts of the industrial chemical melamine. You get chemicals in food all the time. The, the question is,、uh, what is the safe level? The country's top quality control official has resigned, but allegations are growing. The original milk company involved in the crisis, Sanlu Dairy, knew as far back as last December that there was a problem with its infant formula. Sanlu's New Zealand partner says they first heard about the problem on August 2nd. What's happened here is a criminal event. That confession's not enough to console Chinese parents who feel they can't trust anything is safe to feed their children.、And、Chinese authorities are left to deal with thousands of parents who never imagined milk could be the source of so many worries. Celia Hutton, CBS News, Beijing. The next case comes from Italy. Italy faced a crisis when dioxin, a harmful chemical, was found in buffalo mozzarella. While initially concealed, the issue became a scandal, impacting exports and consumer confidence. The Italian government has recalled from sale the mozzarella cheese linked to dioxin contamination. Italy's health ministry said the affected cheese came from 25 producers in the Campania region near Naples, where buffalo mozzarella is made. France has now lifted a ban on sales of Italian buffalo mozzarella. In 2017, Lactalis, a French dairy giant, recalled 12 million cans of infant formula after detecting salmonella. Though not fraud per se, the mislabeling and failure to alert regulators promptly raise serious concerns about transparency. Lactalis believes the salmonella outbreak was caused by a drying tower at the factory. The company also said that the same strain of Salmonella was responsible for an outbreak in 2005. Also, let's watch it here. The French government is threatening to sanction some of the country's top supermarkets after they admitted recall baby food made by Lactalis had still found their way into shops. The admissions deep in a Salmonella health scare that began in early December, when the government ordered a halt to sales and a global recall of products from a factory in northwest France. Economy Minister Bruno Le Maire laid the blame squarely on Lactalis. The state on the 9th of December stepped in for a company which failed in its actions, and which I re-emphasise bears the sole responsibility for the quality and safety of the products on sale. This matter is serious. It's led to unacceptable behaviour, which must be punished. Supermarket chain Carrefour said it had sold 434 products at risk of contamination since the December recall. While France's biggest retailer System U said it had sold nearly 1,000 products. Salmonella infections can be life-threatening, particularly for young children. Several companies were found adding cellulose or wood pulp to Parmesan cheese as a filler. These products, labeled 100% Parmesan, contained far less cheese than claimed, deceiving customers. In 2016, Kraft Heinz cheese, labeled 100% grated Parmesan cheese, was found to have 3.8% cellulose. Between 2 and 4% is considered to be an acceptable level, according to the Bloomberg story. Now. Kraft Heinz is among the companies named in a lawsuit for using cellulose filler in its 100% grated Parmesan cheese product. Let's watch the story here. 
Kraft labels its Parmesan cheese as 100% real grated Parmesan, no fillers. Well, Bloomberg reports that may be 100% inaccurate. The news outlet tested a few store-bought grated cheeses for cellulose, which is made from wood pulp. It's a safe anti-clumping additive that's acceptable at a level of 2 to 4 percent. Now, don't Asiago to your fridge and throw it all out. Adding cellulose to grated cheeses is normal. It costs manufacturers less than pure Parmesan and is usually listed as an ingredient. Now, when we look at brands, Kraft had 3.8 percent. More concerning was Walmart's Great Value brand, which registered at 7.8 percent, and Jewel Osco's Essential Everyday brand came in at 8.8 percent. However, Bloomberg claims Whole Foods Parmesan had cellulose levels that registered at 0.3% despite it not being listed as an ingredient. Whole Food claims it may be a false positive. This report comes during an FDA investigation against Castle Cheese Incorporated. The cheesemaker is accused of putting a little too much wood pulp into its products. An easy way around all of this is just to buy and grate your own cheese. The only wood added would be from your choice of tree. But if you can't do that, it's time to call upon the Gouda gods or anything holier than a slice of Swiss. Our cheese needs your prayers. For Newsy, I'm Cody Legro. In August 2013, Fonterra announced a global recall of whey protein concentrate and infant formula after test indicated the presence of botulism causing bacteria. The recall affected around 1,000 tons of products across seven countries. However, later testing by New Zealand government officials found no sign of botulism bacteria. The scare damaged New Zealand's reputation for dairy quality and led to a fine for Fonterra. This incident emphasized the need for transparent communication during recalls. The head of the world's largest dairy exporter, New Zealand's Fonterra, has apologised over a food safety scare that saw some contaminated products shipped to other countries. But he insisted that milk products are safe because bacteria would be killed during processing. Bacteria has been found that can cause botulism. The Prime Minister accused the company of a delay in raising the alarm. You'd think they'd take such a precautionary view to these things and say if it's testing for some reason in an odd way that it would just be discarded until they were absolutely sure it's right. Now, I, that's something the chief executive will have to answer one day. Fonterra said problems were only detected earlier this year. It said bacteria from a dirty pipe at a processing plant was found in whey protein used in baby food. At least three countries have banned imports of milk powder and whey protein from Fonterra. China is one of them. A spokeswoman from one firm that sells the milk powder said no adverse reactions have been reported from consumers so far. We're asking our sales teams to investigate. Fonterra's chief executive travelled to China to reassure consumers. Botulism is rare but can be fatal. The case is sensitive in China, which has had several food safety scandals, and damaging to New Zealand, which relies heavily on dairy exports. In July 2008, 14 people became ill after consuming raw milk from a retail market and a farm. Seven of the cases were confirmed, and three of those experienced hemolytic uremic syndrome, HUS. The investigation found that raw milk consumption was associated with illness and that there was a dose-response relationship between the amount of milk consumed and the severity of illness. Raw milk from several U.S. farms caused E. coli outbreaks, spotlighting the health risk associated with unpasteurized milk products and leading to more stringent state regulations. Let's look at the news here. Well, here. About 250 families are a part of the herd share or cow share program at Jesse Meerman's Green Pastures Dairy in Coopersville. Once a week, they come by to fill up their bottles with unpasteurized milk. There's a lot of people who really believe that the bacteria that are killed by pasteurization are important in our, in our diets. But it's not so-called good bacteria that health departments are worried about. It's another type of bacteria, a dangerous strain of E. coli that two people in two different West Michigan counties have contracted. Sources tell us they got the bug after they drank unpasteurized milk from green pastures. Has anyone ever gotten sick from your milk? There have been people getting sick, but again, we go back to the milk and, uh, and the milk's always tested negative, so it's impossible to say. When we have two people um, and both of them, we have knowledge that they drank raw milk from the same cow share, uh, that's pretty strong evidence. 
Her share programs aren't licensed, regulated, or inspected by the state of Michigan. Health department officials told me today they don't have jurisdiction to go in and test the milk. The CDC says you're 150 times more likely to get sick from drinking unpasteurized milk than pasteurized. If there is this health risk available, why can people do this at all? It's a good question. I don't have an answer for that. The analogy I could think of to um, uh, Russian roulette, you're just waiting for something bad to happen. Eventually it probably will. The symptoms from this strain of E. coli are things like bloody diarrhea and abdominal cramping. We're told it's particularly dangerous for children if they contract it. Now, if you have any of these symptoms, you're asked to contact your doctor. Brian. Thank you, Danny. Microplastics have been found in 38.98% to 75% of breast milk samples. The most common types of microplastic found in breast milk are polypropylene, polyethylene, and polyvinyl chloride. Exposure to microplastics for pregnant women may come from water intake, scrub cleaner, toothpaste. For lactating infants, exposure may come from breastfeeding and plastic toys. Let's look at the complete report here. This suggests that the ubiquitous occurrence of these pollutants in the environment makes human exposure to them inevitable. Studies suggest people eat at least 50,000 plastic particles a year. Now, that is not very surprising if we consider that thousands of tons of plastic waste are dumped into the environment every day. From the summit of Mount Everest to the deepest oceans, microplastics contaminate the entire planet. People consume these tiny pollutant particles via food and water. Microplastics have been found in the feces of both babies and adults. And they have also been detected in the human blood and placenta. Although the situation sounds alarming, no adverse effects have been observed in infants so far. Researchers have still advised that the presence of microplastics in breast milk shouldn't be taken as a deterrent for breastfeeding, as it is still the best source of nutrition for babies. However, mothers should pay attention to their exposure to plastic and take appropriate precautions. Here is my appeal to everyone. As we conclude this feature, we urge India's dairy sector to prioritize food safety rigorously. Every recall and contamination incident is a reminder of the need for vigilance in hygiene, accurate labeling and quality controls. By enhancing oversight and embracing safety as a core value, our dairy industry can prevent crisis and uphold its reputation. Let's commit to delivering only safe, trusted dairy products to every Indian household, protecting both consumers and the legacy of our dairy sector. Jai Hind!